everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun spring card, or I'm calling it an advent spring card. This was requested by Connie and it is a version of Sushri Patil. She's made this, but hers is all in centimetres, so I've changed it up slightly because hers was huge. So this one is six by six in size. It's in one of my six and a quarter by six and a quarter envelope boxes. I'm not going to show you how to make this, just go to that video there and that will do it all for you. So this one here, it looks just like the pull-up accordion, however it is constructed differently. Now in her video, I guess the, the one of the main differences is the size, but also this bottom here, she also has stuck to this top one here. So you literally pull it out, almost like more of an accordion, I would say, but it does have a lot more of a spring to it. So I guess that's why she's called it the spring card, but I love it and it, works great with the advent papers that I'm using. I'll show you all that in a moment because there are 24 sides. So I thought, brilliant. And I just love it. I love inside as well. This is the difference. So there's there's all these like kind of, I guess a level. So you've got these three pieces and where they're joined, you've got this like little piece here. Whereas with the pull up card, these are just all separate. So it has a much nicer profile. It's a lot neater, I would say, but I think it's great. And then underneath you have lots of room there to write your message and yeah, very straightforward to make, it's not hard at all, and it's easy to change the size again. So yeah, I love that it all fits in the box. I'll probably decorate that a little bit further with a nice Merry Christmas or something on top, but let me show you how to make it. Okay, so for this one I've used the Paper Addicts Festive Folly, and it's a whole 12 by 12 sheet of all of your advent numbers. And what I'll do is, because I've used both of them and I've cut into this one already in preparation for this video, I'll just add in a little bit now, just showing you the whole sheet. So yeah, beautiful, really traditional colours, which is one of my favourites. So I'll link everything as always below. Then for the sentiments inside, I just got my selection of the Crafter's Companion sentiment, Christmas sentiments, and it was one from Merry Christmas and this one here, I think it was. Again, these will all be linked. They're so handy. And I did say they're going to be used all the time. So I've already gone ahead and I have cut them all down because they do come up much bigger. So, you know, you may not want to use those for this. You might cut your own numbers, but I did have to cut a chunk off. So for example, there is the 25 as it comes. So the actual size of the squares are about two and three eighths squared. But this, in order for it to be a six by six, my squares were two by two. So I had to cut these all down to one and three quarters squared. And then I've got the mirrored cardstock, which is one and seven eighths squared. Okay, so depending on what you're doing, you may not want to have your border, in my case the gold, and then you might just want to cut all of your pieces to one and seven eighths of an inch squared so you'll just have a little bit of a red frame, but I wanted these actual pieces framed. So you can see there how I cut it down. So if you have got the same paper packs, I know a lot of you will, then that's what I had to do. So I've cut the images down to one and three quarters squared and the gold to one and seven eighths squared. And you will need 24 of the gold and then obviously you've got those because they're already on that that sheet but if not you'll need 24 pieces I mean you know it doesn't have to be Christmas the pull-up cards I will also link up here because you know they look great with butterflies all on them and you know lovely stamped images and coloured in images and things like that so you can do whatever you want then I've got five more pieces of exactly the same size but I've just done this in pattern paper and that's for one for the very top and then for inside okay and one for underneath to hide the ribbon all right, so five pieces again with the mirrored. If you want to do that, one seven eighths squared, and then the pattern one and three quarters squared. Now I've already gone ahead and done two of these pieces. So you are, you have three of these. Now you may want four or five. You may want it to be a really long dangle kind of card. It's entirely up to you. But I am sticking with three because that gives me the twenty four sides for the advent. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put one of them together. But in total, you are going to need twelve pieces of six and a half by two and along the six and a half inch side you want to score it two four and six and then you'll have that tab you just want to fold and burnish all of the score lines and then with the tab I just mitered the edges just take a little wedge off okay so you need four per element all right so I've already got my four all cut and scored so I'm just going to score and um, fold and burnish those and I've already gone and taken off all of the 
sides off there, off my tab. All right, so they're ready to go. Then for the base, again, I've gone and stuck this all down because it's just mats and layers. But for the largest piece, it's six by six, okay? And that will sit perfectly in the envelope boxes because they're six and a quarter squared. So the red piece is the base, which is six by six, and then you want to drop down however you want with your mats and layers. So my gold mat here is five and three quarters squared, and then my pattern is five and a half squared. And that's what you're going to look at. So these will sit, you can see there how it's going to sit over the top. Looks like a nice big present there with a the bow. Then on the back, I've done the same, no, slightly changed it actually, because so I wanted more of a gold frame. So obviously that's the red piece. And then you stick your gold, which is again five and three quarters squared. And then this one, I must have gone straight down to five and a half. And then this is five by five. No, yeah, five by five. Okay, but it's entirely up to you. you just do whatever mats and layers you want. But I like the ones with, uh, the, on the front there with those three. Okay, and then you also want some ribbon as well. And then we're going to assemble one of these pieces. Okay, so I'm putting it together differently because one mine's slightly smaller and I think this is going to be easier for everybody. So what you want to do is get two pieces. Okay, so they all look the same. You just want two of them. And on one of them, you're just going to add a little bit of glue onto your tab. Okay. And then with the flat end of the other one, all right, so there's the tab end there. You're going to just stick them together. Okay, then get the other two and do exactly the same again. Okay, and then where you've stuck your join over the back, that's your middle. Even though you'll have two on one side and three on the other, that's the one where you've joined them. That's the one you want to stick over the same one of this one, but you're going to stick them like that. So you should have three pieces, three pieces, two and the tab, and two and the tab but it's that bit there that you want to stick over. So just make sure you've got both joined pieces overlapping each other. It doesn't matter, you know, one on the top, one on the bottom, you know, it, does, it really doesn't make any difference. But I'm just going to add some glue onto that one. Okay, again, make sure you get the one where you've stuck them together. And just make sure you keep everything nice and straight. That's the key part with this, is just keeping everything lined up. Now, for me, this is going to be my top one. So this is the one that I want to add my hole punch in the centre. Now, you won't do this on all of them. So on these two here, they're just plain. So if this is not the top one, you don't need to add the hole punch. And I'm also going to add one of these pieces here. So I'm going to have this green one right in the middle, because that's going to be the very centre. So I'm going to stick that down, and then I'm going to hole punch through it all. Okay, so I've got my screw punch here. You can use a normal handheld one, but you want to make sure you can get it into the centre. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to pop that right in the middle of my pattern here, which is why I used it, because it's quite easy for me to line up. And just punch my hole right the way through. Like I said, this is only if you're going to have the one with the ribbon. So this is the top. So I've got this lovely green here, and we're going to pop all this in before we stick it together. So I'm just going to pop both of these pieces through here. It's quite a thick ribbon, but it is lovely. Okay, it's entirely up to you how long you want it. I think that's about right. So I'm just gonna trim off that a little bit, and then I'm gonna grab some of my red tape and just pop a little strip. It doesn't really, well, yeah, it doesn't, just either side of the ribbon doesn't matter too much, it's just to stick the ribbon to so that it lies flat and then we're going to cover it with one of those decorative squares. So then I'm just going to open up the ribbon and just flatten it down like that. Looks like a really nice little bow actually, look at that. But now you've got the ribbon handle and then you've got that nice and flat and then if you grab one of your other pieces of these and you can just pop that over the top and it will just conceal everything. So I'm just going to pop some red tape and then I'll pop a little bit of my liquid glue over the fabric just so it does stick well. Yeah, I've just popped a little bit of wet glue on there as well and then I'm just going to stick this over everything. Next we just want to join these all up so get one of your tabs, it doesn't matter again which one. And then you're going to stick those together. Okay, and then the other one with the tab, you just want to put a little bit of glue just there, just to stick that onto it. So just line up the score line with the edge of that square. 
and just cover that whole area in glue and stick the last one over the top so it's all concealed. And then what you wanted to do also is pop that inside before you seal these up, but you can still do it like this, it's a little bit fiddly, but if you just pop a little bit of glue, it was just really to cover that join there. I mean, that's just me being picky, but you don't have to do that. So that's now going to dry. I'm just going to pop, like I said, you don't need a lot of glue, just enough to hold it in place. And then just pop that in. You can grab it from, you know, both ends, but I would do it before you stick down that last bit, but that's fine. You can see now it's easy to do. All right, so it's like a little, you know, tree decoration. You can have these on their own. They look really sweet. You can have a little tea light or something in them as well. I think they look quite cute. In fact, I might do that. There's a little separate, um, yeah, little video. Do some different sizes. I think that'll look really, really sweet. So you will then want to do that two more times. So you've got three all together and then you're just going to stick them on top of each other. So that one and then that one there. All right, now you might want to decorate your strips as well before you put them together. I like to have it all together and then I can kind of see where my placement is and how everything looks coming together. So it's up to you. But what I would do, first of all, is grab your base, okay? And you're going to stick that on there, but you're only going to stick that center square. So, a bit of glue there. And just line it up with the red mat because that's perfect that's six by six in size so as long as it all lines up you know you're bang in the middle and everything else will fold and sit nicely so that's that one then i'm going to put glue on this one here so you're always just working the center of each one okay then stick the next one over you can offset it you could have it on an angle if you want but i'm going to keep it all lined up and then finally glue on that one and at this point, if you go over and just burnish all of those corners, it will give it more of a spring. Okay, so now you have your spring. All right, and now it's ready to decorate. So I have all of my pieces. Okay, so what I like to do is kind of do the, the top one first and have like one of each color for me. So I've got the cream, then I might have the green one there, then let's have I want to really mix up the numbers as well let's have that red one there and then let's have 24 another present one so that would be like what they see when they pull it out of the box and then this one here this strip will be where I'll have them happy Christmas as well and I'll probably have these two I just like to try and keep a mix of the colors so you don't end up having like all cream on one strip or something so that's just because I'm using these obviously you decorate them however you want but I'm now going to quickly stick all this down Okay, so there is the card. I love it. I think it looks brilliant. And I, I do, I think this has a much stronger and nicer profile than the accordion style. I still do love that one. I think it's a, you know, a wicked design, but this one does seem just to be a lot stronger and um, a lot more neat, I guess. It, it does look, you can see just the profile there, how well everything kind of stays lined up and things like that. So yeah, I think it's great. And you've got lots of room there too, obviously write your message it will look brilliant they do they look lovely as um birthday cards special wedding cards you know things like that people just don't expect to have something like this when they pull it out of the box and that's what they're greeted with so i think it's lovely okay so as always thank you for watching connie i hope this has helped you out and for everybody else that's watching thank you please hit that subscribe button if you haven't and i'll be back again soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye